The Rise of Christianity by Mr. Amster. Before you begin, please make sure that you have a sharpened pencil or pen and a highlighter. If you look in on the image in front of you, you'll notice that it is the Last Supper painted by Leonardo da Vinci in about the 1490s, and it represents the last dinner that Jesus of Nazareth had before his crucifixion. Up until Christianity, the early Romans worshipped the spirit gods of the Etruscans. After they conquer the Etruscans, they adopted the gods of the Greeks and allowed conquered people to worship their own gods as long as they worshipped the Roman gods first. But as this developed, the Romans became less and less forgiving for people that didn't worship their gods. Many different religions and sects, though, will at least originally flourish in the Roman Empire. Around 30 CE, on the border of the Roman Empire, in what is now Israel, Jews began following a prophet named Jesus of Nazareth. After his crucifixion, the religion expanded beyond the Jews to many other people in the surrounding areas, and a new religion was born. They became the followers of Christ, also known as Christians. Please take a moment and highlight early Romans, spirit gods, later Romans, Greek, gods of the Greeks. 30 CE, following Jesus, Jews, excuse me, followers of Christ. Rise of Christianity. For the first 300 years, Christianity was practiced, and that included the spreading, but also the setting up of churches in private. In fact, Roman officials viewed it as a threat and often killed them. This sparked a big war, well, internal battles between of religious of sex. This is something that we've seen throughout most of history. Now, in 312 CE, a powerful general named Constantine experiences a spiritual experience on the battlefield. After winning this battle, he is named emperor. Under Constantine, Christians are offered protection and are allowed, allowed and, and he allows churches to be built all over the empire. But he's through it all a lifelong pagan well, believer of Greek gods. It's only on his deathbed that he is absolutely bap actually baptized. Now, during his reign, in about 325 CE, the Council of Nicaea is held. And during this time, there is agreements made on the basic Christian principles. Now, up to this point, Different, different people had different views on Jesus, on rules, on all of these t commandments, everything. Here is where they laid the foundation where everybody could be on the same page. In 392, Emperor Theodosius, Theodosius, excuse me, makes Christianity the state religion and outlaws all other religions. It's also a good thing to note that he is the last emperor to rule over both the East and the West empires. I know I've been going a little fast, so if you need to pause the video, please do so right after I give the highlighting. So, let's highlight first 300 years 
practiced in private. Roman officials viewed as a threat. Constantine experiences spiritual experience. Offered protection. Baptized deathbed. Council of Nicaea. Basic Christian principles. Theodos Theodosius. Christianity is state religion. Last emperor to rule over both empires. A lot of highlighting, but that's okay. Please pause the video at this time. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Why convert? Christianity's popularity is not really much of a surprise if you look at it. The belief system was greatly appealing. First of all, there's concept of salvation. Christianity promised life after death in heaven. In the Roman religion, only gods went to heaven. Emperors were considered gods. Everyone else went to the underworld. Doesn't sound very fair, does it? On the other side, equality, which is what we just talked about. Christians promised equal opportunity. In Rome, people were separated by the social structure. You, jo you could join Christianity and be equally Christian. Let's make a nice little equal sign with a check mark next to it. Because equality is good. Please take a moment. Popularity, not surprise belief system greatly appealing and highlight concepts of salvation and equality. Once again, if I've been talking too fast, please take a moment to pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Symbols of Christianity. If you notice right here, we have a Greek cross with arms equal length it is considered to be the most ancient cross notice how each side is relatively equal and if it's not perfect it's because I act was adjusting the image and may have messed it up but in a Greek cross everything is equal however the one we most know is the simplest and most common form called the Latin cross which is right here but it doesn't come into use until the 2nd or 3rd century CE. Mostly because they, they view it as sort of a punishment. Remember, crucifixion was a punishment of the Roman Empire for many, for hundreds of years. Now the empty cross, which is what you see here, is now usually favored by Protestants. And reminds Christians of the resurrection. The crucifix, with the body of Jesus on it, is more often favored by Catholic and Orthodox churches. Again, this is most of the time. Please take a moment and simply just highlight Greek cross and Latin cross. Now, the last one is a symbol called ichthys. And this literally means Jesus Christ, God, Son, Savior. It's a fish symbol right here. Now, as it reads here, and this was taken from eurekaforyou.com, is we do not know whether the story above is true about this whole fish symbol. But what we do know is that the fish's first known use as a Christian religious symbol was something within the first three centuries A.D., or C.E., as we choose it in this class. Possibly around the 16th century, Christians began using the word ichthys, which is Greek for fish, 
It is the most commonly used word in the New Testament for fish as well. Now, it congrades five Greek letters, I, C, H, T, H, Y, and S. When these five letters are used as initials for five words, we obtain Christian declara uh, the Christ this Christian declaration. And it is a acrostic poem for Jesus Christ, God's Son, and Savior. And you can see it down here. The end.